uh, Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board, um, <coughs> which is now called to order. We have a, uh, an agenda of um, three items, uh, approval of minutes of the previous meeting of October 18th. Uh, next, we have a, um, the Portland Water District is requesting a resource protection permit to install drainage structures for the Spurwink pump station located at 445 Spurwink Avenue. <coughs> and uh, third uh, is the Cottage Brook Boardwalk Resource Protection Permit. The Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to construct 250 feet of four foot wide boardwalk on an existing trail located on the Cottage Brook open space off Spurwick Avenue. And finally, there will be a chance for public comment on anything that is not on the agenda. The first item uh, being the minutes of the previous meeting, which has been circulated to the board. Are there any comments or questions? If not, I'll call for a motion to approve. So moved. Move second. <clears throat> any discussion on the seconded motion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. <coughs> Excuse me. Technically, Peter, technically I abstained because I wasn't here at the meeting, so. Oh. Right. But that's okay. That's good. Five in favor, one abstention. Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> the next item of business, um, the Portland Water District is requesting a resource protection permit to install a groundwater under drain for the pump station located at 445 Spurwick Ave. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. The procedure will be as follows. Um, we'll have the applicant summarize the project. <coughs> the board will then make a finding uh, of, have a chance to make a finding of completeness after giving the public a chance to speak to that issue. Uh, if it's deemed complete, the project will then be reviewed on its merits. Um, there will be a public hearing on the merits as well. And at the close of the discussion, the board has the option to approve, approve with conditions, deny, or table the application. Would the Portland Water District like to present the, um, what it's up to? Thank you very much for, for your review of the application. Uh, I'm Paul Rodriguez. I'm a, a senior project engineer with the district. Uh, with me today is, is Norm Todell as well. Norm was uh, instrumental in, in helping uh, pull the, some of the details of the application together. So we'll, um, we'll do a quick review. And I will try to speak loudly into the microphone um, while, I, while I point. But um, the, the reason why we're here uh, has to do with groundwater getting into a vault that is located uh, here near the southern end of the station and that vault is below uh, some electrical gear. So um, over the years we've done um, as uh, exterior coatings, uh, interior coatings of the conduit, everything we can do to try to keep groundwater from, from getting into that vault. Um, obviously as groundwater sits in that vault it creates a, a human environment and that's, that's not ideal obviously for the long term life of the electrical gear. So um, we, we come to you with this proposed project um, as a way to alleviate groundwater from uh, sitting here against the side of the building. And, um, and, and that area, as we all know, is, is low, as typically that's where pump stations are ideally suited locationally for a, a relatively low area. So it's always, it's always wet there. Um, so the uh, proposed project includes a uh, groundwater relief drain that will run along the backside of the, of the structure to alleviate some of that groundwater against the building. And then daylight um, just uh, to the west of the structure um, and the invert elevation of that would allow for that um, uh, relief drain to be uh, above highest high tide um, but to speak to the, the question that I know has been 
has been raised and is, is of importance for all of us going forward is we understand that, that this area being one of the lower areas in town, um, when we look at long-term um, seawater uh, elevation change and storms, um, those are not really impacting the, the, the main goal of this project, which is 99% of the time to alleviate the, the groundwater um, that's, that's basically uh, collecting on this backside of the structure. So storm surge happens, this whole area is wet, you know, obviously it's not hurting or helping us. So um, certainly another discussion for another day, probably 20 or 30 years from now is, okay, what do we do then? But this being, a, the, the pump station itself being a, a 20, 30 year asset, you know, certainly would be appropriate to, to think about those things at that time. But for, for now, that, that's the main goal. Those are the primary objectives. Did I forget anything, Norm? I yeah, Thanks. Uh, just the fact that uh, the outlet of the drain is outside of the area that the district currently leases from the town, and we have already been to the town council, I think earlier this spring, and the council did approve a lease amendment agreement to allow that drain to be built all the way to the area where we're a little drain into the river. Thank you. And that'll be completed pending a positive vote tonight, so. Could you identify yourself? Uh, my name is Norman Twaddell. I'm with the Portland Water District as well. I'm the district's right-of-way agent, administrative assistant. Can I ask a question? Um, I just want to make sure I understand what I'm looking at here. Uh, this note, 93 linear feet of four inch groundwater relief drain. The, the line that it's pointing to is a pipe that is 20 to 34 inches down in the ground. And it runs, it, the invert is at the ground level. Um, the uh, invert of the pipe, okay, so good. 6.75. At, right, at, at, the, at the start of the, of the drain, um, the invert is, is fairly shallow. It is only buried by, as you say, about 20, to, but it's about 20 to 30 inches down from grade. The whole grade. pipe is underground, so the water Correct. flows over the ground and just drops into the trench and is carried in the pipe out to the riprap. Correct, so the, the, whole, the, 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 the whole pipe is underground and, and will be restored, you know, the, the surface will be restored grass, loam and seeded. Okay, and the vault access is that's to the vault under the pump station? Uh, correct, yeah, that is um, somewhat unrelated to, to this, uh, but, but shown for, you know, relative purposes for the, for the contractor. It is a, a vault to access the pumps that are um, outside of this, this structure really houses just the generator and the electrical gear. Oh, okay. So the pumps are actually below grade and in, in a vault in that general location. <clears throat> Any other uh, questions uh, by members of the board for the water district? Just one more question, and I, this is, I guess, in the same vein as, as Joe's previous question. You'll have a underground pipe buried in, in crushed rock or gravel, I take it. Is the surface restoration, is that done in the configuration of the swale to keep the water of that area kind of centered over the pipe so it will go down in, or is it flat graded? The, um, the intent was for it to be flat graded, um, so to restore it to its current um, its, its current configuration, so we, we won't be really changing, or at least the current plan doesn't change the way that that stormwater, you know, runoff occurs on the site. This is my own lack of knowledge speaking, but why would you not create something of a swale just to focus the water into that area which you want to infiltrate the pipe and go on rather than having it dispersed? Sure. Um, 
our 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 real um, focus is is on um, is on the groundwater and the groundwater really close to the structure. So our hope was to uh, alleviate that you know small pockets very clay there so obviously our our focus is is really on on that side of the building it has to be kind of narrow focus so the 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 surface grade really you know from from our point of view is as it's currently configured is is fine i mean surf water on the surface can continue to go where it's going now um, it's it's really you know, we're not intending to take surface water and, and direct it in that location. We're looking to kind of keep everything on the surface as it is and get the, the groundwater away from the structure. So the groundwater is the water coming up? Right, so the, the groundwater that's basically in that, that clay saturated soil around the subsurface structure. This is what's commonly referred to as a French drain or not? Y yeah, I, I think that is. That is a, 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 a good term for it. I, I hesitate because it's not, maybe not a perfect analogy. R with, but roughly yeah, speaking. Yeah. yeah. Elaine, Carolyn? I just want to get to the topic of completeness, which is the first item on right. there. That we're to, and there are a couple of waivers mentioned here. And I just, we know you asked for the waivers from the <laughs> But I think in the interest of the public knowing, could you ex please explain the waivers and why you think we should grant them? Uh, certainly. Um, do you, should we, uh, anyone in particular, or? Uh, there are two waivers indicated here that were requested. And I, I, just, I just think it needs to be stated for the record why you're asking. What, uh, the one foot contours and the mapping of vegetative cover, I believe, are the two? The waivers mentioned here are information on wetland plants and wetland soils and uh, stormwater management plan. Certainly. So are um, there more? <laughs> yeah, well, the, you, know, you had a two foot contour, but I, looking at your plan, it looks like it's already drawn in one foot contours. <clears throat> I didn't quite understand that one. Right. Um, so speaking to the, uh, to the, the, the one foot contour waiver. Um, uh, our feeling was that uh, as, as the extent of this work is, is, is fairly minimal and, um, and, and really doesn't create any, any new impervious areas or impact surface flow on the site that seemed um, appropriate uh, to us. Um, the stormwater runoff plan, um, uh, waiver is, is, is really our justification for, for requesting that is very similar in that the extent of the work is very small and doesn't create any, any new impervious area or impact uh, the way that uh, stormwater is, is managed on this site uh, currently. Those were the two main ones. Um, Car uh, Caroline, did that answer your? Well, the other one mentioned here is wetland plants and wetland soils. Yeah, mapping the vegetative cover and, and soils. Sorry. <coughs> Was your on mapping the vegetative cover and, and soils? Right. Yeah. Providing information about wetland. It, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm opposed to any of yes, this. No, I'm I just, trying to get it out just for public looking information, up my that's all. Right, understood. <laughs> um, w with respect to uh, the, uh, with respect to the um, wetlands mapping, um, our feeling there was as, as this is a, you know, previously disturbed site where the structure um, was constructed, uh, we're, we're not, uh, again, not, not impacting or altering um, uh, uh, impacting um, uh, uh, wetlands uh, with this project, so that that's the the main reason for for the request of that waiver. Uh, one, did I miss anything on that? Thank you for your your help. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, just the fact that there is a little bit of wetland impact at the outlet structure where we do have some stone riprap to prevent erosion, but that would be the only thing that would be located in an area that's not already improved with grass. And Are there no other comments? I'll offer the public an opportunity. Oh, I, I just wanted to point out that in the uh, town engineer's letter that we have from Sabeo Technics, they talk about the reasons for the requested waivers and right. support those waivers. Yes, the engineer has, has provided the support. Offer the public a chance to be heard on the subject of completeness. completeness. Any members of the public wish to be heard? There being none, we'll close the public comment. Um, do board members have any other questions on the subject of completeness? Being none, uh, ask for a motion. Jonathan? Uh, motion for completeness be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Portland Water District for a resource protection permit to install a groundwater under drain for the pump station located at 445 Spurwink Avenue be deemed complete. Waiver, uh, number one, waivers for providing information on wetland plants and wetland soils. Waiver for providing a stormwater management plant prepared by a professional engineer. Second. Do we have a second motion? Is there any further discussion? Elaine? Do we need to add to that the waiver of, uh, regarding the mapping? The one foot contours? The one foot, co yeah. the one foot They have one foot contours. Yes, yeah, the map has one foot contours. I, I think the letter was in error asking for oh, that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, okay, uh, call for a vote on the second motion. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we will turn next to the merits of the application. Would the water district care to make any further comments on the uh, on the application? Any reasons that would go beyond the issue of completeness that you'd like to bring to our attention? Uh, no, none at this okay. time. Okay. Uh, do board members have any comments or questions, Carolyn? No, let Elaine go first. Okay. Mine's kind of foolish. Okay, I'm looking at the criteria that were asked to. Um, identifying our specific findings here. Uh, and I'm looking specifically at item number 11 on page four of our memo. Talks about um, conformity with a particular environmental quality handbook erosion and sediment control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 as revised. But I don't see in the supporting materials anything that specifically addresses those standards. So I guess my question would be to Maureen, nor does the engineer specifically call out those standards. So I just want clarification as to what our basis is for making conclusions on that. Well, we're trying to cobble this together. And um, that is a standard in our ordinance. And I am confident that the installation of the riprap and the restoration of the site after the installation of the pipe, this as proposed by the applicant, is consistent with this environmental quality handbook. I'm wondering if in the future that's something we could ask the engineer to look at, because I don't even think we have a copy of it. Maybe you do. Um, the only thing I can kind of add to that, Elaine, is if you do look at the um, plan they submitted, Item number three does refer to the main, I don't have my glasses, ENCH handbook will be used. Would that be the same handbook that they're talking about? I don't about? know. That was one of my questions. I don't know that that is the same handbook. Okay. I was just wondering if maybe that yeah, note. Erosion and sediment control. Also might address this one. I'm just wondering. I saw they'd refer to a handbook, but I didn't know if it was the same one. And the handbook has changed its name, but our standard says, or subsequent revisions thereof. So it feels like we're still in the range of what would be acceptable. Okay, maybe we can just. I take it this is a standard of good practice for this yes. type of construction. It's that been around can, for a long they time. They can be held to in the, yes. by Ben when he goes to 
Absolutely. Ben actually has to get training for this, and we are under a stormwater permit. And uh, when construct contractors are out there, I think some of you saw a, an email I forwarded to you recently that actually have to fill out a separate form just uh, just about stormwater and erosion control. So. Okay. okay. And the other question I had, kind of similar on floodplain management, we have in our materials that there is a. a floodplain permit required here and the finding is that the um, the underdrain complies with this particular section of the floodplain management ordinance and I guess my question is is that is getting the permit from the town what's required in order to meet that requirement that's a good question um, we're working with the standards that we have in the zoning ordinance and the wetland permit standards have not been changed since 1990. So the floodplain requirements have been updated at least twice that I can think of. What I can tell you is that I did ask the code officer who's responsible for administrating our floodplain ordinance. He, he concurred that this needed a permit and I think by putting a condition on the approval that it, it get the floodplain permit, that you can make the finding that it's going to comply with the floodplain regulations. So maybe we want to add that to the conditions. Sure. Do you have text uh, to add on that, Ellie? She's writing. Oh, okay. I'm looking up what it's the kind of permit we said floodplain permit from the code enforcement officer. Okay. I'd just say that the floodplain permit be obtained from the code enforcement officer. Those are my own comments. And just yeah, that should have been condition three. In my mind, it was condition three. Would you tell me the condition of that? It just, that, it, that a floodplain permit be obtained from the code enforcement officer. Thank you. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, Caroline, you had a. I have a kind of an odd little thing. Um, this is located on Spurwink Avenue in Cape Elizabeth, not Spurwink Road in Scarborough. So your your plan does not identify, at least the copy we have doesn't have the right road name next to your, oops, on your, for your site. So Spurwink, we'll, it we'll fix that. causes confusion. <laughs> Good catch, where is it? Hmm? On the plan? Right there, Spurwink Road. Spurwick Road, yeah. Is that? Spurwick Avenue Spurwick. is the proper name of the road. Oh. Let's move the eyes in town real like in this uh, Thank I'm you. always sending trucks around and I got to make sure and send them to the right place. <laughs> you folks will. Uh, well, certainly, yes. Take care of that one. Thank you, Carolyn. Any other comments or questions or observations by the board before we consider the application on its merits? Public. You need to have the public. Right. Okay, uh, we will next offer the public a chance to be heard on the merits of the application. Any members of the public like to be heard? There being none, we'll close the public uh, part of the session. And if there are no further comments, I'll ask for a motion. Elaine, would you like to do it since you've got the new text? I'd rather not read it. Oh, okay. It. Would somebody else like to read it? <clears throat> Joe? Sure. Motion for approval. Finding of fact. One, the Portland Water District is requesting a resource protection permit to install a groundwater under drain at the pump station located at 445 Spurwink Avenue, which requires a resource protection permit. 
Two, the proposed underdrain will not materially obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alteration area. Three, the proposed underdrain will not impound surface waters or reduce the absorptive capacity of the alteration area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties. Four, the proposed underdrain will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the discharge of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, or otherwise. Five. The proposed underdrain will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Six, the proposed underdrain will not pose problems related to the support of structures. Seven, the proposed underdrain will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quantity or quality of groundwater. Eight, the proposed underdrain will not disturb coastal dunes or contiguous back dune areas. Nine, the proposed underdrain will maintain or improve ecological and aesthetic values. Ten, the underdrain will maintain an adequate buffer area between the wetland and adjacent uses. Eleven, the underdrain will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of Environmental Quality Handbook Erosion and Sediment Control, published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986, or subsequent revisions thereof. Twelve, the underdrain will be accomplished without discharging wastewater from buildings or from other construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 15-1-4 of the sewage ordinance and 13. The proposed underdrain will not in the case of resource will. Yeah, will. 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 Oh, the proposed underdrain will, in the case of resource protection permits in the resource protection floodplain district, also comply with section 666 of the floodplain management ordinance. 14. The application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Portland Water District for a resource protection permit to install a groundwater underdrain for the pump station located at 445 Spurwink Avenue be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised to address the comments in the town engineer's letter dated November 7, 2016, paragraph 6, 7, and 8. Two, that the site be inspected after construction to confirm the area has been restored to the original grade and revegetated. And then three, do, can I just read it at this point? Or do yes, do you have it? I don't have it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. I'll take it. Three, that a floodplain, oh God. <laughs> that a floodplain permit be, be obtained. obtained. Okay. Three, that a floodplain permit be obtained from the Cape Elizabeth uh, code, enforcement. code enforcement officer. Second. We have a motion uh, that has been seconded. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Being none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? It carries unanimously. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you.
the next item on the agenda <coughs> excuse me is a cottage brook boardwalk resource protection uh, permit the town of cape elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to construct up to 250 linear feet of four inch wide boardwalk on an existing trail located on the cottage brook open space the application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. The procedure will follow, uh, it will be as follows. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry, four, four foot wide. The, uh, we'll first have the applicant summarize the project. Uh, the board will then address the issue of completeness and the public will have a chance to be heard in that matter. If the board find, does find that the submission is complete, it may then continue to review the merits of the application. There will be a public uh, hearing on that issue as well. And at the close of the discussion, the board has the option to approve, approve the conditions, deny, or table the application. So first off, we'll have the applicant uh, summarize the project. If you'd identify yourself, sir, and tell us what's going on. Yeah, good evening. My name is Jeremy Gabrielson. Uh, I'm uh, representing the town's application on behalf of the Conservation Committee. And uh, we're seeking an application, the town is seeking an application to install 250 feet of boardwalk on an existing trail. The trail is uh, within an area that is uh, set aside as an easement um, and has a trail right of way in it. There is an existing trail that um, is on the site in this location. It's a trail that was not formally designed um, and there's some braiding and running around through the mud. Uh, and so the purpose of this application is to uh, both provide a better user experience um, and also um, our hope is that by putting a four foot wide trail in, we'll be able to eliminate some of that braiding that's occurring and um, the natural wetland veg vegetation will be able to grow up on either side of the boardwalk. Um, this trail alignment is one that will help um, get trail users out um, onto um, Spurwink Avenue up in the near the South Portland end of town and uh, it's um, oh I just lost my train of thought but um, it's um, the alignment basically is um, there's not an upland location on this site for the trail to be aligned so uh, the location that we um, have landed on where the existing trail is is really the shortest segment of, of wetlands that we could cross to get from one side of the property to the other and the entire trail is within an RP2 wetland. Okay. Uh, board members, any questions or comments? If, if you could address specifically the two waivers you're uh, seeking, uh, the one-foot contours and the uh, um, runoff. Stormwater runoff. Stormwater. Uh, um, yeah, so the one-foot contours, um, I, so I'd refer you to the report submitted by the town engineer. Um, the one-foot contour waiver, uh, it was felt was not needed because the um, boardwalk that we're seeking to put in here is actually an elevated feature so it will sit above the level and it shouldn't affect the um, ground gradation or runoff um, at all and uh, in terms of the the um, stormwater runoff the justification is the same it's less than a thousand feet of boardwalk and it should not materially alter the runoff um, in this area and the town engineer has approved both uh, comments or questions by member Okay, offer the, oh, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Just a quick comment. I appreciate the package that was put together. It was very nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. I can take no credit for that at all. <laughs> yeah, indeed, it's very nice. Uh, any members of the public would like to be heard on the issue of completeness of this application? There being none, we'll close the public comment period. Um, if there are any further comments or questions by board members, I'll ask for a uh, motion, please. 
Nothing? Sure. Motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials <coughs> submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit be uh, to construct up to 250 feet, uh, 250 linear feet of four foot wide boardwalk on an existing trail located on the Cottage Brook open space be deemed complete and the following waivers are granted. One, a waiver for providing one foot topographical contours and two, a waiver for providing a stormwater management plan prepared by a professional engineer. Second. We have a seconded motion. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Being none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? It carries unanimously. Uh, since completeness has been found, we'll proceed to consider the application on its merits. Does the applicant have any further points you'd like to make on the application? Uh, not at this time. Uh, Jonathan. Um, just so we're clear, uh, with regards to where you're putting this, or where you're uh, requesting to put the boardwalk, that's sort of between an RP1, which is an actual, like, salt. usually it's a um, standing water, correct? And then private land. So that's sort of the only option that you have? That is correct, okay. yes. And where else in town are similar boardwalks used? What other trails? Um, Don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but are you, have you used these before? Was oh, Woods oh yes. Before? Winnick Woods is what? a similar Winnick example of this. Yeah. And they have, you've had good results with these types of boardwalks? Yeah, they hold up pretty well. Um, they're, they really do a good job of channeling users to where we'd like them to go um, rather than trying to avoid the mud and braiding out farther into the wetlands. And, and one thing that was discussed during the workshop was that um, this part of the trail is usually very wet anyway, and it's because it's so wet that it's sort of been expanding out, so people are kind of making their own trail there. And the, yeah. uh, the belief from the Conservation Committee in the town is that a boardwalk will actually be, it'll be better for the, the trail and the natural environment itself because it'll keep people sort of on dead center, correct? Correct, yeah, I, I would expect that if, you know, based on past experience, you put the boardwalk in, 99% of users are going to be on the boardwalk, and the wetland areas that are currently becoming muddy around it are going to narrow in, and that vegetation will grow back. Uh, Elaine. Mm -hmm. The materials talked about this path being for hikers and bikers. Is there a ramp that goes up to this boardwalk to make it accessible for people on bikes so they don't just go around it? Uh, yeah, it'll be designed so that there's a, it'll it'll grade in um, similar to what we have in Winnick Woods. It's, you know, you can you'll be able to ride your bike onto it. So there's it won't sort be of a ramp because I'm, I'm looking on the drawing that we have and it doesn't show anything like that. Uh, yeah. The, the intention is for it to have enough, uh, a, a shallow enough gradation at both ends that a, a bike can get onto it. Great, thank you. Victoria? Uh, just a general question about time frame. Mm -hmm. w when does the town propose to maybe put this in? That's a good question. Um, the, so the boardwalk um, would also be subject to other permitting and I don't know what the specific time frame is. I, don't believe it will go in before snow flies, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know for sure. Um, yeah. Okay. And I'd imagine that the um, just like the other boardwalks that the conservation committee is doing, this is going to be all volunteer work. That Correct. The town's not going to be spending a lot of money on the labor of putting these in. Correct. Our our goal is to keep the cost of installation as low as we can. Caroline. <coughs> At this point, we'll offer the public a chance to be heard on this application. Any members of the public like to be heard? For being none, we'll close the public hearing. Any further uh, comments or questions by the board? If not, I'd like to uh, call for a motion. I could do a motion. Yeah. Can I do both? Is that procedurally allowed to complete that sentence? Approval? Yes, you we, we, just did, yeah. we just did. I don't know. That I, that I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Motion for approval. Findings of facts. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to construct up to 250 
linear feet of four foot wide boardwalk for an existing trail located on the Cottage Brook open space which requires a, re a resource protection permit. Two, the proposed boardwalk will not material obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alteration area. Number three, the proposed boardwalk will not impound surface waters or reduce the absorption capacity of the alteration area so as to cause or increase the flooding of adjacent properties. Four, the proposed built boardwalk will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the discharge of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten injury to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, or otherwise. Five, the proposed boardwalk will not result in significant damage to the spawning grounds or habitat of aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Six, the proposed boardwalk will not pose problems related to support or structure of structures. Number seven, the proposed boardwalk will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quality or, quant or quantity of groundwater. Number eight, the proposed boardwalk will not disturb coast coastal dunes or can, uh, can wow, conting contiguous back dune areas. Number nine, the proposed boardwalk will not maintain or uh, will maintain or improve ecological and aesthetic values. Number 10, the boardwalk will maintain an adequate buffer area between the wetland and adjacent land uses. Number 11, the boardwalk will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of Environmental Quality Handbook Erosion and sentiment, uh, Sediment Control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 or subsequent revisions thereof. Number 12, the boardwalk will be accomplished without discharging wastewater from buildings of or, of, or from other construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 1514 of the sewage ordinance. And or, uh, 13, the proposed boardwalk is not located in a floodplain. 14, the application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the pl plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit to construct up to 250 linear feet of four foot wide boardwalk of, on an existing trail located on the Cottage Brook open space be approved, subject to the following conditions that prior to construction of the boardwalk, the town obtained any necessary permits from the Department of Environmental Protection and the Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Second by Joe, thank you. Uh, we have a motion to been seconded. Any further discussion on that motion? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, last agenda item is a opportunity for public comment on anything not on the agenda. Any members of the public like to be heard? There being none. Um, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. Motion, we adjourn. Second, favor, carried unanimously. We're, we're done. <laughs>